Bhagwan Red Bins. It's been a long 24 hours. Francis is here, Lawrence is here, and we're in Malaysia. Let's go. <laughs> My name is Ben Chapman. I got into cycling when I was eight. My most favourite thing in the world is jumping on a train and just get off and then go ride in that area. It's just the freedom of having a bike and to go anywhere you want. So yes, good afternoon and welcome back. It has been a very, very long 24 hours, two flights and around about 14 hours in the air. And I've made it to this beautiful Ibis Hotel. Actually, let me show you what 50 pounds gets you just next to the airport in Malaysia. Hi Francis. Hello. So I left Newcastle on Wednesday at 9 a.m. It is now 17.10 on Thursday. The plan now is Francis has organized a lift. It's actually not me that organized it. It's someone called Jean. And she asked a man called Akmal. So Akmal is coming to pick us up in his pickup truck with our bikes and driving us for four hours up the coast to a place called Georgetown. Georgetown. And Georgetown is the next place I'm going to get this camera out because I need to sleep. So fast forward seven hours sleep and like every trip we've started at a Trek store because Lawrence has had a bit of an issue with his tail fin and he hasn't been able to fit it. I've rounded some cleat bolts on my shoes, I know, silly, and they're not in the right position. So the first thing we need to do is get Lawrence's bike sorted and get my shoes sorted. We are currently on a small island called Georgetown just off of Malaysia and the plan today as long as Lawrence can get his bike sorted is to do a full lap of this island and I've been told there's some pretty hefty climbs in it. We've had some noodles, we've had some rice because that's standard breakfast here, a little bit of watermelon but no coffee and no cake yet but they've promised me some. Francis, can you briefly just repeat what you just said? What's happened <laughs> for the third time? What's happened to Lawrence's bike? So Lawrence forgot to bring. I did not forget to bring anything. Let's get this perfectly straight. The man from Tailfin, I won't mention names, but everyone at Tailfin is called James. So it doesn't matter, it could be anyone. <laughs> Honestly, to work there, all you have to do is be called James. Uh, there was miscommunication and Lawrence ended up with the wrong threaded axle for his tail fin rack system. So, we've bought a regular rack, one of these like, just bunch dredger touring ones. Luckily his frame had uh, the little holes for the mounting. And we've put that on and then gaffer taped his tail fin to it so he can still use all the panniers and still use all the bag space and stuff that he had. So we don't need to buy bags, which is good. I've got space for my nuts <laughs> and my gaffer tapes. <laughs> I think I'm yet to go on a bikepacking trip where the first day hasn't been faffing around. <laughs> so I'm yet to go on a bikepacking trip where every day isn't faffing around. <laughs> and thank you to Trek Malaysia for the t-shirt. I'm um, considerably warmer than I was <laughs> when I set up this. <laughs> thanks, thanks Trek Malaysia. When I... Ben now has heat stroke. <laughs> and what does we mean to go on? I can't get rid of the t-shirt because that would be mean. 
so I now have to carry more. 45 degrees, and the air feels it's edible. <laughs> you can eat it. So my bike is currently weighing in at around about 20 kg. I've only been riding for about three hours a week over the last five weeks. So the next couple of weeks is gonna be pretty testing for me. Lawrence has been training properly and I believe Francis has even been doing a bit of turbo work. But no excuses, it's beautifully warm. I'm in bib shorts and I'm on an island. quick update it's still 45 degrees we're about three hours into this one 10 miles <laughs> <laughs> I don't want this video to be me complaining about the weather because I know how cold it is in the UK at the moment I'd rather be here than, uh, than riding past Team Valley but no it, thanks to Team Cyclist though. you know what it's the humidity that does it it's not the heat I mean the combination of both yeah because I did a ride through the desert Death Valley, hottest year ever. 50 degrees, but it felt cooler than this. Because it's dry. Yeah. Here, we are, I told you that air is edible. It, mm, mm. You don't need to carry water, you just look like this. What did you say yesterday? Uh, tough times don't last. <laughs> that was Only nice. tough people last. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Francis are having an absolute ball off the bat. We, Lawrence. Horrible time. <laughs> Lawrence has got some power meter pedals and he's testing them. Yeah. And he's up there, somewhere, 15 miles in. See the monkeys? What? You missed it, didn't you? I did not see any monkeys. Mate, monkeys were like running out in front of the road. I got it all. <laughs> it was brilliant. Did you see monkeys? <laughs> they were like all along the barriers and that. For me, did you not see that? No. They're all like. Is it so much of a blur from the climb? I'm going dizzy. Yeah, I was. I do you know. I thought I was going to faint. Should we get some cold drinks? So as mentioned, we are on Georgetown Island and the only way to get off Georgetown Island is by plane or by boat. We've just stopped for a little bit of food and if I'm honest, I'm feeling a little bit ropey. I ordered a lovely chicken wrap and I was putting food in my mouth and struggling to swallow it. And any cyclist knows that exact feeling. So I've topped the bottles up with some carbs and some salts and we're about 40k into this one. I think we've got about 20k to our boat, but we've got a few climbs in between. It's currently 7 a.m. in the UK and around about three o'clock here. I got about six hours sleep last night, but I'm still all over the place with jet lag and I think that's probably the main reason I'm feeling a little bit ropey. camera's not going to do this justice but let me tell you Lawrence was riding and now even he's stopped this is look at that I am nearly flat on the road it is about 40 degrees and my heart rate is 190 walking and as Francis just said when we stopped this is too hot 
I think we've been walking now for about an hour. Lots of resting in the shady places. It's still about 16% and it's just unrideable with this amount of weight on the bike. Previous bikepacking trips, we've always pre-planned our hotels and booked them. But on this one, we're just booking as we go. Now we do have a hotel booked on the other side of the island tonight, but we need to get the boat. And if it carries on like this, we're not gonna make it. So we're probably gonna end up staying here for another night. But that's the benefit of not booking hotels on a bikepacking trip. I think this is the top. So after two hours of walking up a hill and then a 30 minute descent and warping my front brake, we've made it back into Georgetown and it looks like we're gonna make the boat. Lawrence, he's once again. He hasn't got any cash, so he took your cash. Again, I've bought out 300 pounds today and we've got none left. That's, 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 that's an exaggeration. We've now come to the shop to get some water, some salt water. It's really hot. It's well hot, it's well hot. They're just pound, they're just ones, they're like, that's worthless. Wow. It's like 6p. Yeah, but a drink is three of those, so it's not worthless. It's oh, is it really? Yeah. Oh, right. The plan now is to get on the boat, which Francis has organised. Oh, I haven't organised anything, I just found out there was a boat. I bet there's no money to buy the boat unless I've got money, isn't there? That's I know, the I have money, it's just hard to access. So I'm relying on you to quickly access it when we need it for busy drinks. Good morning, so last night we got to our hotel, this hotel, and had a little bit of an issue securing the bikes in the room. Now, some hotels don't mind you taking bikes to the room, but this one's quite big and quite posh, and they said we couldn't keep the bikes in the room, and this can always be a problem when bikepacking at using nicer hotels. Yesterday we managed a very modest and very steep 70K. With our stomachs full and the bikes ready to go, we are now ready and set for day two. We're making our way down the coast and we've got around about 80k on the cards today and I've been told it's fairly flat. That has been day one and day two of this already amazing bikepacking trip. Please remember to comment, like and subscribe and I'll see everyone on the next one. 